Welcome to Through a Veteran's Eye. I'm your host, Fred Schinberg. Our program today will provide you, veterans, veterans' families, and veterans' friends, with information concerning benefits and services that are available from our local veteran service organizations or VSOs. Once again, this program is our way of saying thanks for all you, as veterans, have done for this great nation. I want to remind you of the telephone number of Maryland's Commitment to Veterans Behavioral Health Services, which is a hotline for veterans and their families needing help with behavioral health issues and any other issues that the veteran may encounter. That number is 1-877-770-4801. Welcome home. Today, we will discuss the work that Veteran Service Organizations provides for veterans and of our community, as well as our community. Even after serving the armed forces, veterans continue to work tirelessly for the benefit of those veterans that need assistance to receive the benefits and service that they earn. My guest today is Commander Harold Karn, Commander of AMVETS Department of Maryland. Welcome, Commander Karn. Thank you. Commander, as a veteran, what is your military service background? Well, Fred, uh, you don't mind if I call you Fred. Do I you? do not mind. Okay. Thank you. I enlisted in the Air Force uh, right out of high school in August of 1956. I trained at Lackland Air Force Base. I went to tech school at Keesler Air Force Base in Mississippi, and I was an intercept radio operator. And I went to Anchorage, Alaska for two years. And then when I left there, I went to Security Hill at Kelly Air Force Base for the rest of my uh, original enlistment. And I was discharged there in May of 1961. Well, I had a job in civilian life waiting for me the minute I got out. But the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred, and I was in a critical career field, meaning that I could be called in on an individual basis. And I thought, well, if I join the Air Force Reserves, I'll be with an organization, and the chances are that they'll call us all up instead of one. But uh, when I did, it was a 433rd Troop Carrier Wing at Kelly Air Force Base. And I flew on C-119 boxcars, which, as an airborne operator. And these planes were built in Hagerstown, Maryland. Oh, very good. And uh, they had no HF radios, and that's why I was a radio operator, where they, they needed one because the pilots, of course, uh, they didn't operate the manual radios. And I spent two years there until I left for Colorado with my civilian job. And it ended my reserve career at that time. But at that time, the C-119s were being replaced with C-130s. And they didn't need radio operators because they had all automatic radios. And they no longer needed radio operators. So they were cross-training them to be load masters. And I left during that transition, so I never got into that. But that's basically... Well, thank you very yeah. much, and thank you for your service on that. I, uh, it's interesting that the 119 was made here. Yes. In Hagerstown. That's really good. Uh, if you don't mind, uh, if you could give us a brief history of the, uh, uh, the origin of AMVETS and uh, what the general mem eligibility membership requirements are. Yeah, the origin was uh, returning veterans that provided the impetus for forming AMVETS in the first place. And at the time, many of them belonged to veterans clubs or college campuses. And as the number of, of uh, returnees swelled into millions, it was evident that some of the national organization uh, assistance for them would be needed. The older established national groups wouldn't do so the leaders uh, made this new generation of veterans that wanted their own organization. And with that in mind, 18 of them, representing the veterans clubs, met in Kansas City and founded the American Veterans World War II on December 10th, 1944. Less than three years later, on July 23rd, 1947, President Truman signed Public Law 216 making AMVETS the first World War II organization to be chartered by Congress. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, they, uh, uh, you're, you're the department commander of, of Maryland. Uh, how many AMVETS posts are there in Washington County area? 
In the Washington County area, there are two. And where are they and what are they named? Uh, post number 10 is in Hagerstown. It's on Frederick Street mm -hmm. there in Hagerstown. And the other post is post 14, and it's uh, at the former Army base at Fort Ritchie mm -hmm. up at Cascade, Maryland. Do you have a, a, a rough outline as to some of the benefits or uh, what is available to those members that are already AMVETS or eligible for AMVETS? Uh, some of the benefits, are, of course, are services for homeless veterans. Uh, and each year, AMVETS award scholarships totaling $40,000 uh, to deserving high school seniors, ROTC students, and veterans pursuing higher education and also providing sound advice and prompt action on compensation claims at no charge to the veteran. Good. Yeah, that's the key, no charge, uh, no charge to the veterans. Uh, one, of, one of the areas I wanted to get uh, to touch on that uh, I'm aware of that AMVETS has a, has a very active honor guard. Uh, could you just, in the time we have remaining, could you just yes. briefly touch uh, on what they do? The honor guard is also at post 10 and uh, it's commanded by Earl Rusty Baker. And the program is as follows. Uh, in one instance, when the fu funeral for a veteran uh, is to be done, the family can request a military funeral, at which time the funeral home will ask the family for a copy of his DD-214. This is very important to have because it saves a lot of heartbreak for the family and the funeral home will request, request a free flag from the post office and the funeral home will contact Rusty Baker and the honor guard will perform the ceremonies. This is done many times throughout the year. So far this year, it's been 73 military oh. funerals. And, and again, I, 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 it's no charge to the veterans' exactly. families, right? That, that's, the, that's the important thing about it. Right. Um, we only have just a, a few seconds left uh, I want to emphasize that any of those, uh, uh, the services, veteran service or funeral service is coordinated through the funeral home. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Well, Commander Karn, uh, thank you very much for being here today and thank you for your service and uh, coming out today to be with us on Through a Veteran's Eye. I'm Fred Schinber. Thank you for watching.